Hello and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. My name is Tim Smith and our guest today is Daniel DJ Serrata. DJ currently serves as Vice President, Global Business Unit Leader at Cook Medical. He's in charge of the Interventional Radiology Division. DJ started at Cook as a critical care sales representative in 1987. While a sales representative, he also acted as product manager for the Northern Pacific Rim, doing business primarily in Japan and Korea. In 2000, he moved in-house at Cook's global headquarters as the critical care marketing manager. DJ then transitioned to the peripheral intervention division in 2004, where he quickly became a senior product manager overseeing products that would eventually become the Interventional Radiology product line. Today, DJ will share his thoughts with us about Cook's global business and their strategy, as well as his thoughts about globalization and today's global business landscape. DJ, thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, Tim. Well, uh, to start with, help us better understand how Cook Group is engaged in the global marketplace. Well, first of all, Tim, we are selling our devices into 135 countries around the world. Great. So uh -huh. we have manufacturing facilities on three continents. We manufacture in the United States, in Limerick, Ireland, mm -hmm. in Brisbane, Australia, and in Bieverskov, Denmark, which is just outside of Copenhagen. Okay. Um, and so that gives us quite a large footprint around mm -hmm. the world. Great, appreciate it. So in engaging the global marketplace, what's the next market you guys are looking at on the global stage that may be a good one for you? Well, like most companies, we're heavily investing in the Pacific Rim mm -hmm. area, Asia Pacific. Uh, really China being probably uh, one of our largest customers. It, it certainly, in most of our divisions, it's the, large, the second largest or third largest customer that we have. Okay. And it's rapidly growing. Yeah, well great, well good luck in that marketplace. So what are your thoughts about the intersection of business and culture? How do these two worlds converge successfully? And how would you define the current global, global business landscape in terms of diversity? Well, so business and culture go hand in hand. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So much of business is about relationships. And if you want to develop relationships with folks and understand how to conduct business with them, how to work with them to solve problems mm. and, and, and implement solutions into their market, you have to understand their culture and you have to understand what they're about and what their interests are and Absolutely. what's important to them. Mm -hmm. And so we spend a lot of time helping people understand the culture of the countries we're in. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, we are working really hard to employ folks that are from those countries in those countries. Okay. So what about Cook's culture for a moment? Maybe you can help us better understand that. What are some terms you would share with us that help define the Cook culture? Well, uh, I would say Cook is one of honesty. We try to be humble. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to be thoughtful and provide value. Uh, to our customers and, and to our partners anywhere. Any, any, whether we're working with a community mm -hmm. or whether we're working with hospital systems or our distribution partners around the globe, um, it's important that, that we provide a sense of community, mm -hmm. we provide that, that honesty, that we are a good and valuable partner and that we are able to share experiences. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks, GJ. How have you found the local, regional, and the global business landscapes to impact one another? Well, it's a, it's a very broad question. You know, so much of business is, is global now, and mm. what happens in one area or one market often will happen in another. And while there might be a slightly different spin mm -hmm. based on that country or that country's culture, you know, we're in the healthcare space. And delivering healthcare to sick patients, which is what we do every day, and helping support those clinicians that serve those patients, there is a consistency about that around the world. And mm. so we aren't different in different markets. We're sensitive to the differences of the market. Mm. Well, I want to follow up with that. Today, when you were speaking with the undergraduate students here at Kelly, you spoke about the importance of listening and going into a market, not only listening to your customers, but listening to those who are a part of your team, who are part of your business unit. When we listen, we clearly have a better understanding of what's going on. How has listening played an important role in your career? Well, um, you know, it, it's, 
it, it's built my career. Mm. You know, what I what I try to do, what I've what I want to do is understand the nature of the challenge that we're managing. Right. Sure. And that's really what business is. Mm. Whether I was a sales rep working with a clinical customer who was having to treat a patient in a certain way, mm. or now working with my colleagues in the organization across the globe. I have to understand what are the challenges, mm. where are the struggles, where do we need to focus our attention, what can we do to help, how can we improve? Right? Yeah. Always trying to get better, always mm. trying to solve the problem at hand. And to do that, you have to understand the problem. And to understand mm. the problem, you have to listen to that individual or that team of individuals, collect that information, understand what the problem is, and then you can begin, only then, really, can you begin mm. to solve that problem. That's great, thank you, GJ, thank you. How have you been able to innovate to navigate a seemingly complex web of different customs, values, and business practices successfully? What have been your biggest challenges to date in operating in diverse marketplaces? The, well, the biggest challenge for me in, in operating in a diverse marketplace is the travel itself. Mm. International travel, while seemingly glamorous, is <laughs> brutal. Um, but when I'm in countries, uh, you know, whether it's in Asia or in Europe, mm. the, the beauty of that is meeting the kindred spirits mm. that exist that are out there. You know, people aren't that different. Human beings, there's a lot of threads that run through us all regardless of the culture. Definitely. And one of the things that I've always enjoyed is learning a new culture and understanding of people, whether it's their customs, uh, whether it's, you know, the specifics to the, to the healthcare market, mm -hmm. or whether it's their food. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so much of what we do when we interact is we have those opportunities to bond over a lunch or a breakfast or a dinner. And you know, cultures are proud of their cuisine, they're proud of their heritage, and sharing that is something that they enjoy doing. And in, in receiving that, mm. um, we can enrich ourselves and we can develop some lifelong bonds. Definitely, thank you. So are there any universal values, ethics, or best practices that you have observed throughout your career? Truth, trust, and honesty. Mm. I mean, you know, they're very much the same. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I think that's number one. I think people want to see, they want to, they want to know, you know, the, the, the kind of the question behind the question. They right. want that transparency. Mm -hmm. So I work very hard at trying to be transparent and trying to show whether it's the the team I'm working with, or whether it's you know the external customers that we have mm -hmm. or partners that we're working with. I try to be as transparent as I can be, mm -hmm. so that I can develop that trust. Um, you know, earn their trust, as it were, uh, show that we have a plan and there's a rationale to what we're doing and why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and being transparent allows us to develop that bond. It allows me to develop that bond. Thanks. So 30 years at Cook Group, 30 years. <laughs> so to answer this question, what would you share with me? What does ethical behavior look like at Cook Group? Well, you know, from the time I started, mm. Bill Cook himself, the very first day on the job, said, we do the right thing. Mm. Now, that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. So I would say in doing the right thing, that means taking the moral and ethical high ground, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's doing what is right, what is honest and fair and appropriate to the situation, the people that you're working with. Mm. Um, but that transparency is very important to me, and, and that's something that has been instilled in the company since day one. Mm -hmm. um, we've always been open and honest. It's always been a very transparent group. Uh, Bill was comfortable with questions, but I will say this. One of our important cultural aspects is if you can identify or you do identify a problem, don't just share the problem. Bring with mm -hmm. that problem some possible solutions. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have the solution. Mm -hmm. But if you can at least come with something other than just the problem, if you, if you present just a problem, that's a gripe. Mm -hmm. If you present a problem and some possible solutions and a willingness to work towards that solution, now you've got something. Yeah, I agree. And then it's not transactional. It's an actual relationship because you're participating in a far more meaningful way than just coming up and complaining or making an observation. That's, that's wonderful, DJ. Thank you. And I'm so glad you've been a part of that community and added to that culture for so many years. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I, uh, I enjoy the work uh, that I do, and I certainly enjoy the company that I work for. It's, it's been a lot of fun from day one, and, and certainly even now, after 30 years, I enjoy going into work every day. That's great, that's great, thanks. So we're told that today's business landscape is global, and in some ways, 
possibly appearing to become more homogeneous across the regions of the world. But in this globalization, there's still incredible complexity and diversity in the business landscape. What's your view based on this with your experience with Cook? So globalization, I mean, it's a big word and it means of different things to different people. Mm. But I, I think as a, as a species, there are a lot of threads that run through us as human beings. Okay. And I think those threads are in many ways very consistent uh, regardless of what country you're in, what mm. culture you're experiencing. Um, there are certain mores that I think we all have. And so I think once we understand those, we can address that. But then we can go a little deeper mm. and then understand what the subtle, and I think they're really subtle differences, but maybe maybe some cultures feel they're more than others. Mm. I, you know, when you look at art, uh, you look at history, you look at, um, you know, what defines a culture. Mm -hmm. um, there are differences there, but I think what defines us as a species, as a people, I think there is consistency. Mm -hmm. And so what, what I like to do is, what is it that we're trying to achieve? What's the objective? Mm -hmm. And then how do we work together to achieve that objective? And so that involves some very honest discussions, some mm -hmm. very honest feedback, um, and then tackling that problem or what that challenge is together Mm -hmm. and figuring out how we can go forward. And doing that, understanding that there are, there are customs and traditions in countries that you have to be sensitive to and thoughtful mm -hmm. about, and that they're important to, that, to those people. Great, thanks, appreciate it. So what skills will business professionals in the future need to operate successfully in this global landscape? What should, edu what should educators be doing now to prepare our students? Well, I think helping students understand that there are cultural differences, mm -hmm. encouraging them to do that research. You know, um, if you're if you're well prepared, and you understand the market you're going into, you're going to to get ahead. You know, I've heard the the line, you know, uh, failure to plan is planning to fail, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think it's important to do that. But you know, the internet gives us the access to all the information we need when we're trying to understand a marketplace. Mm -hmm. So get in there, dig in, and understand it. And I think if our educators can help our students understand that, that, hey, we need to do some research. We need to, to make ourselves as much of an expert as we can in the space that we're going into. Mm -hmm. um, and then bring with that the listening you mentioned early, earlier. Understanding and listening to what the challenges are, mm -hmm. that helps us so much. It, 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 it builds the opportunity to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. Take it all in. Absorb it, discuss it, mm -hmm. have a little back and forth. Too often, I think, f individuals are quick to rush to a decision, mm -hmm. right? Not that we have to be, uh, not that we can't make decisions, because we have to make decisions. Of if course. you're in business, you've got to move it forward. Right. So you have to make decisions. But it's okay to use more critical thinking and to really explore the, the different sides of the problem you're trying to solve to come to the best solution, quickly but thoughtfully. Certainly, and the baked accountability into bouncing an, off, an idea off my colleague, off my group, off my boss, you know, that's going to help come up with the best solution. And I've heard regularly and often in business, if you move unilaterally, you're not going to do it for too long, at least not do it successfully. So I agree with that. And I would tell you, too, there's no fun in it. <laughs> There's no fun. In That's it. a great point, DJ. You know, the a joy great point. is in interacting with each other. It's Absolutely. interacting with your colleagues around the globe. Yeah. It's that learning and that understanding. That's that's the joy. That's what makes business fun. Indeed, it does. And thank you. And DJ, thank you so much for coming in to speak with My us pleasure, today. My pleasure, Tim. It's been a pleasure for me and all of us. Thank you. Anytime. That's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please let us know at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu.